Memorial of St. Monica Food for Soul and Goa Co-working present today's readings and reflection. August 27, 2021 Memorial of St. Monica A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we earnestly asked and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This is the will of God, your holiness, that you refrain from immorality, that each of you know how to acquire a wife for himself, in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion, as do the Gentiles who do not know God, not to take advantage of or exploit a brother or sister in this matter, for the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you before and solemnly affirmed. For God did not call us to impurity, but to holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not a human being, but God, who also gives his Holy Spirit to you. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful ones. From the hand of the wicked, he delivers them. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Light dawns for the just and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Alleluia, alleluia. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on today's readings by Bob. God desires our holiness. St. Paul reminds the people of Thessalonica of this fact. The psalmist describes this same idea in the words, The Lord loves those who hate evil. In the Gospel, 
Jesus compares the wise and foolish virgins to how people seek the reign of God, some with foresight and vigilance, others with lack of readiness. Preparing for the reign of God announces that we want to share in God's holiness. In our first reading, Saint Paul urges the faithful Thessalonians to seek an even closer relationship with God by striving more diligently to live a pure and holy life. This exhortation particularly concerns the matter of chastity. Paul describes the importance of having illicit and valid marriage relationship and to avoid any sort of improprieties. This is not just Paul's thoughts, it is what he sees as the will of God which brings us holiness, a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus. The psalmist describes the reason to rejoice if one is doing what is right. Holiness is seen as being able to rejoice and be grateful for the blessings which God bestows. That should lead to living a life in accordance with God's will. In the Gospel, Jesus likens the reign of God to the difference between wise and foolish virgins. Those who are wise prepare themselves for different possibilities. The foolish act without thinking. While the foolish try to correct their lack of thinking, they miss out on the revelation and celebration for which they were waiting. One aspect of wisdom is the ability to plan ahead so that one will be ready for gift of relationship, holiness, whenever God extends that to the individual or the community. As I reflect on holiness, I realize that holiness is not the result of my doing what is right. Holiness is my response to the Lord Jesus who calls me to be in a closer relationship. Thus holiness is not just being a righteous person like the ten virgins in the gospel. It is the preparedness one takes in being open to God's self-revelation, as the five wise virgins in the gospel. Once I realize how much God cares for me and bestows divine life, holiness, on me, then my response should be to want to behave in a manner which gives glory and praise to God. Each one of us is called to holiness. Again this is not, first and foremost, a call to behave rightly. It is primarily a gift from God to draw ever closer to the one who bestows the gift. It involves our preparing ourselves to be open to whatever, whenever, and however, God decides to extend the holy relationship to us. Our behavior should flow from the realization of the relationship we are being offered and the desire not to put anything into our lives that would strain or destroy that relationship with the Lord Jesus and his Abba Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. It demands consciousness and preparedness on our part. Our lives then reflect the holiness which we receive from God. It is somewhat similar to the relationship between a husband and a wife. They do not treat each other well to get some favor from their beloved. Rather, they act lovingly because they have already received love and been drawn into the loving relationship by God's grace. The psalmist describes holiness in a way which demonstrates that it is a gift of God and should lead to praise of God for being so benevolent, be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to God's holy name. The personal question, action for today. What has been my understanding of holiness? Have I thought of it as something I earn by my style of life, or as that which flows through my life affecting my style of life? How have I experienced the holiness of God which the Lord Jesus has shared with me? How can I be more open and prepared for holiness and the relationship with God which it implies? What can I do to bring the holiness of God to those with whom I come in contact? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all holiness. Through your goodness you desire us to share in your very life of holiness. Your gift of being able to be in relationship with you is what makes us holy. Yet, sometimes we have taken that gift for granted or have chosen other things instead of the gift of your life. For that we seek your forgiveness. Continue to send your Holy Spirit into our lives, so we may reflect on the gift of your holiness, especially as it is presented by your Son, Jesus. May we gratefully accept the gift you give us and share it with others so that they may also enjoy the fullness of your life and the holiness which you offer them. May our lives reflect that holiness in the way we live each and every day. We make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior and Brother, who is our Master Teacher and who has died and rose to demonstrate the holiness of life which you desire us to have. 
He is the one who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa